Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is well and that you are ready for the CHS student orientation. Uh, in front of you now, it's uh, Zuzega Prudenzimcha from the College of Human Sciences under tuition support, uh, tuition and uh, dinner support. So today I'll be your program director. We have a very short program where we have just a few speakers that will take you through what the College of Human Sciences is all about. So I smile before you today with great joy and excitement as we gather to welcome our newest members of the College of Human Science family. So in the College of Human Sciences, we are this big family and we are looking forward to joining this first year with you as our students. And uh, we are hoping that you see your future the way we see it, bright and promising. So we're going to start now and I'm going to ask um, our Deputy Executive Dean, which is Professor Mashau. Professor Mashau, I hope you are already on the platform and I will hand over to you to do the welcoming for us and uh, put a smile on our students' faces. Welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining the CHS Student Orientation. Prof Mashau, if you're ready, please join. Um, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, uh, Zuzeka. Let me try and share my. We can see your screen. Oh, you stopped sharing now. Uh, share again. Right. There you go. Um. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Program Director. Uh, let me use this uh, opportunity to thank you for the invite so that I can come and uh, do the welcome and opening uh, remarks on behalf of the CHS uh, Dinari, um, which is led by uh, Professor ZZ Nkosi as our Executive uh, Dean. Um, CHS is a college with um, more than 50,000 students. And um, if you check, you realize that we form part of uh, important key stakeholders in the higher education uh, sector. Um, as a college, we offer high quality general academic and career focused distance education tuition in the arts, humanities, social sciences, religion and theology. We offer a range of programs in the School of Arts, School of Humanities and uh, School of Social Sciences. And, and among others, you have uh, internationally recognized undergraduate de degrees, diploma, honors, master's degree through coursework and research. And, and we do offer uh, doctoral programs as well. And through our centers, uh, institutes and units, the College of Human Sciences also offers a wide range of skills based short learning programs that uh, will surely suit your vocational or self actualization needs for lifelong learning. I would like to extend our warm words of welcome to all of you as students and also all our uh, presenters today. We appreciate the fact that you have decided to join us for this very important uh, event um, this uh, morning. This is an educational space where an iron sharpens an iron. 
It is a space where we research and innovate, teach and learn, critically engage and be engaged. It is a space where we thrive uh, to sharpen our intellectual capacities, uh, but also shape one another to become responsible human beings who can be, uh, who can provide tangible and lasting solutions to many societal problems in the country and in the global community. We are a generation whose uh, lives are disrupted and tossed around and even destroyed by many socio-economic and political challenges, uh, including issues around ecological crisis, global wars, global pandemics like your uh, COVID-19, uh, gender-based violence. Uh, in the country, we are even faced with uh, the crisis around electricity, among others. So the education that we receive must empower us to be change agents uh, in our immediate um, environment. So we need to, to be a generation that is responsive to the National Development Plan, uh, the United uh, Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the Africa Agenda 2063, and other national, regional, and global imperatives. The importance of uh, education is captured by Nelson Rolin Shatter Mandela as follows, and I quote, Education is the great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that a child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. It is what we make of, out of what we have, not what we are given that separate one person from another. Indeed, education should become your arsenal for your personal development and that of your families and communities. We are here as a CHS to journey with you to achieve this noble dream. We pride ourselves as a college that strive to provide the following services to our students, including inclusive teaching and learning where everybody can learn areas and various forms of disabilities. Learner support to ensure success, throughput rates and promote graduateness. Please make sure that you use our help desk uh, we do have student advisors who are well uh, equipped to assist with uh, different queries. Use our student retention unit, uh, our integrated uh, tutor services, recognition of prior learning, and the services of our disability unit in the college. Provide we do provide uh, academic guidance, career counseling, and personal support to our students. We strive for transformative education and, and unashamedly making strides to embrace the decoloniality and Africanization agenda. We have embraced innovative and assistive technology with our online presence, our uh, social media in our, on our social media spaces, and also the use of MOOCs to improve learning ex experiences among our students and to ensure success. However, for you to succeed as a student, it will require hard but smart working on your side. I want to reiterate the last part of the quote by Nelson Mandela. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given, that separates one person from another. And therefore, make 
CHS your college of choice and make the most of your student life. Thank you very much and I welcome all of you. Enjoy the rest of the program. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Program Director. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mashao. I see hearts and hands as uh, students are reacting to your presentation. Uh, Everyone, uh, Prof. Mashao was here to welcome you and to make you feel at home. So he's part of the management of, of the college. So having you today is very important and management wanted to also be, be part of it. So one thing that I forgot to mention before we started. So students, there's a Q&A session. Uh, you'll see at the top there on Teams, there's a Q&A session. You can post your questions there. And I have a number of colleagues that will be able to respond to you. So whatever question you have, put it on the uh, Q&A and we will respond to you there. So thank you very much, Prof. Marshall, for the beautiful welcome. And I'm hoping that our students are excited, uh, just as I am, that they are here and will be part of the College of Human Sciences. So without wasting more time, uh, let me move to curriculum structure. So we have Alice. Uh, Alice is from the CHS Help Desk and she's a student advisor and she'll be talking to you and taking you through curriculum structure. Alice, um, over to you. I see you talking, but please unmute. Sorry, good morning. <laughs> I've joined morning. my colleague's laptop. There's a bit of a glitch with mine, but nonetheless, we are here. Um, good morning, all. Just like as Zuzika said, my name is Alice Maine. I'm a student advisor in the Office of Tuition and Learner Support in the College of Human Sciences. Um, Zuzika, can you please um, just share my slides for me, please? Uh, give me a minute, I'll do that shortly. Alrighty. Okay, um, we can start now. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Like I said earlier on, my name is Alice Maine. I am a student advisor in the Office of Tuition and Learner Support in the College of Human Sciences. So today I will be covering on um, curriculum structure and the importance of you knowing which curriculum is yours and which one um, best suits your qualification and which one to follow. So with each and every qualification, there is a curriculum where students have to follow in order for them to complete their qualification. Each curriculum has rules, a structure, and all the different um, parts that make up your curriculum in order for you to complete the qualification. So in the college itself, there's a couple of undergraduate um, qualifications, such as a higher certificate, um, our diplomas, and bachelor's degrees. So we have a high certificate um, curriculum structure that consists of 10 modules and 120 credits. This qualification can be completed within one year. Maximum that you're given is three years to complete the qualification. We also have a three year diploma, which has a curriculum structure that can, consists of 360 credits. And most of our bachelor's degrees have a curriculum structure that consists of 30 modules and 360 credits that need to be completed in order for you to complete your qualification. We have two qualifications that are a bit different, which is one of them is the bachelor's degree in social work, which consists of 37 modules in total and exits at the fourth level. And then we have another one that's a bit different, which is the Bachelor of Arts in Visual Multimedia Arts. It consists of 372 credits and it exceeds the normal 360 credits that we have in each curriculum. So 
as you know that some qualifications that you guys are already also um, registered for can be completed in th within the minimum of three years if it is a if it's a bachelor's degree or a high certificate or diploma but then with the um, some qualifications such as a degree or they're given you're given eight years to complete some you're given a total of 10 years taking into consideration the admission requirements and also the credits that are required for you to complete the qualification so when it comes to curriculum structure and referring to understanding your curriculum you must know that the qualifications firstly where you can find your curriculum structure you must log on to the unisa website you must go onto the unisa website www.unisa.ac.za and then you go to click on the option where it says register it's the blue um icon there as you see under my or next to my unisa and then you go on to step one where it says find your curriculum and then you go you click on step one you click on the college of human sciences which will be stated there in orange and then under there, you'll find a list of qualifications that are stated there. You look through the list and you find your curriculum. After you found your qualification, then you'll see your curriculum structure stated there. For example, here on the slide, I have an example of a qualification that we have, which is the BA General, known as the BA99311, which is the qualification code. It houses most of our majors. And you'll find as you click on that specific qualification is the first one under the bachelor's degree. You'd find where the first arrow points out is the name of the qualification, which is Bachelor of Arts, the qualification code, which is 99311, the NQF level, and the total credits that are required for you to complete the qualification. And then the third area that we have there, it says click here to for the full curriculum of this qualification. You must click there in order for you to get a full um structure which shows the modules that you're supposed the majors firstly the majors that you have to choose from two majors and then it shows the um compulsory modules for each and every major and then the elective modules or selection modules that you're supposed to choose from the fourth arrow there points out to where you can see subjects you can look through the certain subjects if you click on a module for example if you click on a module code named afl 1501 on that module, it will show whether the module is a first is a first level module. It shows the module whether it's a semester or a year module, and it also shows the purpose of the module. So with each and every module, you can go into that module and click on it to see further information about the module. Next slide, please. So with each and every curriculum, there are specific rules. Firstly, you know that your qualification um, curriculum has levels. Uh, the first, second, third, and some even fourth level um, qualifications. So the curriculum is made, it means that the qualification is made up of four or three levels, meaning it could say first, le first year, second year, and third year. So we know that under each level, there are qualification rules. For example, in the first picture that we have there on our left, it says second level, and then it shows underneath there that there's a, uh, modules that are grouped. The first group, which is group A, is for the compulsory modules that you're supposed to in order to, to complete the major, for its, for example. The second group there, it says group B, where you select two to four of the following modules. So those are your curriculum rules. Under each and every level, so to say, there are also um, prerequisite and co-requisite modules. So what is a prerequisite module? module that you need to complete in order to register for a certain module. For example, there where it says ECS 2603, it says the prerequisite is ECS 1601. So in order for you to register for ECS 2603, you must first complete ECS 1601. For another, another um, what's this curriculum structure rule, we have co-requisite is that you have to complete that module um, you have to register that module concurrently with another module for example it will um, pictures but for example you need to register module um, a concurrently with module b so that you can complete the that level or that group the most important thing also to note under your curriculum structure under the 
not hours that you are given per week to complete your semester. For example, if you are a student who is studying full time or if you're working full time and you're a part time student there, you're given six to eight hours per week. This is what you give yourself also, how you structure your own curriculum. You give yourself six to eight hours per week for semester modules, whereas for year modules, you give yourself four to six hours per week in order for you to complete your required reading times, required reading articles, reading um, material, and also to complete your writing in order for you to complete that specific module. Another um, image that I have here on this slide is of a structured cur curriculum or a structured degree, so to say. This one, for example, is called the name of the qualification is a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations. So what you see there underneath that qualification is the qualification code, the NQF levels, the total credits that are required for you to complete your degree, and also something that's different from the first slide from the last slide is an a SAQA ID. So SAQA the, is an acronym for South African Qualifications um, Authority. This identification is to, to show the identification number of your qualification, to authenticate your qualification and to show that your qualification is accredited. So you can use this ID when you want to see if your qualification is accredited or not. You can go onto the SAQA um, website. You would click on there when you're searching the, the, the code. You click on that ID number and then it will show you whether qualification is accredited as per South African Qualifications Authenticator um, regulations uh, or not. And then another important thing on this specific slide is the fact where we see rules. So that that are uh, those are your curriculum rules. For example, it states that this degree must have a total of 30 modules, like we said previously. And then it says that you must complete eight modules on NQF level five, which is the first level. And then you have to complete 12 modules on NQF level six, which is the second level, and 10 modules on NQF level seven, which is then it equates to 30 modules in total in order for you to complete your qualification. Another rule is that you, that you must take note of is that international politics in this example um, is stated as um, the major. So that's your only major that you will be completing for this qualification. And then the transitional arrangement for some qualifications, not all though, it says that um, um, for a qualification prior to the year 2012, there was a qualification called the Bachelor of Arts in Human and Social Studies with a specialization in international politics and diplomacy. Some students who are doing these qualifications have completed a module that is now stated in this specific curriculum, but it has been um, replaced. So for example, ENN 103F is now replaced by ENG 1503. So these are the transitional rules some that appear in some curriculum structures that you have to uh, um, abide by. So if you have completed, for example, ENN 103F, you may not register for ENG 1503. And if you haven't completed ENN 103F, you may then register for um, ENG 1503. So another thing here it shows here in this image is that on the first level, it says group A are compulsory. These are the compulsory modules that are make that make up the major module, which is international politics. It shows there that ECS um, 1601, for example, like I said previously, has a prerequisite, which is um, ECS 1501, which you first have to complete before registering that module. And then those are the other examples, such as the previous slides, like group B, which talks about the elective modules of your majors and so forth. Um, next slide, please. You're, you've went over your time. Can you please yes, wrap up for us? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in, in short, um, there is there are curriculums are put in, in place for you to know, first of all, what your qualification is, and you must follow the rules in order for you to complete the the, the qualification. If you don't follow your curriculum structure, there are certain implications to that, whereas you find some students register for third level modules if, if, when they're in their first year, where it is advisable to, that you register for the first, first level 
and then the following year you register for all the, the second level modules. Or if say now your, your qualification consists of eight modules on the first level, take two other modules from the second level to make up 10 modules in order for you to complete your qualification in three years. But those are just the normal, just small and short um, information that I have about curriculum structures. The next slide that we have now on is just um, contact details that you may need. Um, these are the, the contact details for each and every college that is presented at UNISA. Our mailbox for College of Human Sciences is chs at unisa.ac.za. You can send us an email with any of your questions. Um, you send us an email from your My Life email address. If you don't have your My Life email address um, uh, activated yet, you can send us an email from your personal email address, but put your student number in the subject line. And if you have any other um, pertaining issues such as an error message or anything like that, please take a screenshot and then you send it and you attach it into that email that you're sending to CHS. Um, I hope that um, I was audible and hopefully everyone understood the importance of their curriculum. And yes, thank you so much and all the best with your studies. Thank you very much, Alice. And imagine if we were telling you now that no, you were not audible, so please uh, do over. Uh, thank you very much. Please let's give a uh, hands, clap hands for Alice. Thank you very much, Alice. Um, students, I really urge you, if you have issues or you are not sure uh, about your curriculum or modules that you're supposed to select, please feel free to send an email to the email addresses that um, Alice has shared. So with College of Human Sciences queries, you send them to the chs at unisa.ac.za. Colleagues will respond to you, and I know at times we take longer, uh, because it's busy, like now we're busy with registration, so we might not respond to you in 48 hours. It might take a bit longer, but you need to be patient with us. We will respond to you and offer guidance. And uh, we have now um, Mr. Love, Curtis Love. Curtis, are you ready? Curtis is going to take us through assessments and uh, please enjoy him and uh, remember to post your questions under the Q&A. Colleagues are there to respond to all your questions. Over to you. Thanks, Sister Zeka. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Sis Alice and Prof Michelle. Um, If we are a family at College of Human Sciences, then as a lecturer, my hope is to be like an older brother, somebody who's there to look out for you, but ultimately whose goal is to to set you on a journey uh, uh, of your own path. So Suzeka, just tell me what time you'd like me to finish uh, my presentation and I'll do it in that time. Ted, um, I think it's 15 minutes for you. If you can yes, do sir, it okay. in less, that would be great. I'll do it in 13, let's do that, okay. So I'm, I'm here to speak about assessments. Um, and yes, I'm from the College of Human Sciences, um, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, the Department of Philosophy, Systematic and Practical Theology. <clears throat> and uh, just to be clear, uh, my surname Love is uh, not made up. Uh, the chair of my department uh, asked me today, is that your real surname or did you make it up? So just to clarify, it's the name that of my ancestors uh, and uh, so I didn't I didn't make it up. I wanted to just introduce this topic uh, in the following way uh, and, and I hope this will help you not only with assessments but uh, with your your studies more generally. Obviously with uh, COVID and the move generally in higher education to 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 online platforms UNISA Two has made that move, and depending on the module, will be in various stages of transition. So if you think about UNISA pre-COVID, uh, it was quite uh, heavily paper-based. You would receive your study guide in print and your tutorial letter in print, and I'll tell you what a tutorial letter is uh, just now, um, with some online uh, dimensions. But our goal is basically by 2030 to be fully online. And so it's difficult to give you clear instructions because 
different modules or at different places on this journey. Huh? So some might still look quite traditional. Yes, there's an online component, but really it's about the study guide and the tutorial. Some modules may have a mix of a study guide uh, and a, an online um, um, component, and some may be even fully online, where you don't even receive a paper copy of uh, the study guide. So that's the first thing for you to be aware of. It's just to say modules are in different uh, stages of transition, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully going to give you just one or two tools for you to figure out what your lecturer is expecting from you. So to get a good understanding of your module, and in this case, assessments, read both the tutorial letter and the module site. And as soon as you registered, you'll have access uh, to your module site. Go immediately and spend time on that module site. Why do I say read both? Because some of us put key information on the module site. Uh, some of us put key information in the tutorial letter. Some of us put it in the tutorial letter and the module site. Some of us only put it in the tutorial letter. So it's difficult for me to give you one um, set of advice. But the key is to make sure you read your tutorial letter and your module site. What is a tutorial letter? It's like a mini orientation. So today we're doing an orientation uh, into the College of Human Sciences. The tutorial letter is like a mini orientation into your module. It tells you what it's about. It tells you the outcomes. It tells you sometimes what the assessments are. If there's a prescribed book, it gives you key information so that you know what's expected from you in this module. But again, because we're in transition, you cannot only rely on the tutorial letter and you cannot only rely on the module site. You must read both at the same time. So this is what uh, a module site might look like, uh, something similar to this. This is from a course uh, that I teach called Human Rights, Values and Social Transformation. Excellent course, and you should take it, not just because I'm teaching it, but that's a good motivation, hopefully. And here on the left-hand side, I'm showing you a little tab called Prescribed Material. Now you will find a digital copy of your tutorial letter in there. Some of you may still be receiving printed copies. But even if you don't receive a printed copy or if it's delayed for whatever reason, you can access a digital copy right from the module website. OK. My advice to you with the module website, as soon as you can access it, go. Uh, sorry, this is also a, a, a desktop version or a laptop version. Uh, some of you may be using the app version, which looks slightly different to this, but all of the functions are the same. As soon as you have access to uh, the module website, go and click everywhere. Click on every link that you can find. Read what's there. I promise you, you cannot break it. You cannot break the site. You cannot do something wrong. Um, uh, and if you do do something wrong, it's because we as lecturers haven't uh, put the permissions correctly. So don't worry. Click. That's the way you get confident at UNISA. You, you, you get curious. Um, there's plenty of information on the module sites, uh, and the more familiar you are with it, the more empowered you're going to feel about what's expected from you in that module. So that's my best advice, uh, rather than giving you all the details, um, uh, is to go and click your way through it. Sister Zeka also asked me to just speak a little bit about referencing, which is a, 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 a big challenge or a big difference from often our high school experience um, or other educational experiences we've had. And so again, I'm not going to give you lots of detail because there's documents you can read and I have a link available uh, that I will share uh, in the Q&A box. But the point of education, I would argue, especially in the College of Human Sciences, where this word human, humanity, person, personhood, 
these kinds of things are important in our college. The point is for us to help you to develop your own voice. To develop your own voice, and that's not just simply so that you can say smart things, but so that you can understand the world, your place in it, and what you believe the world um, uh, should look like for life to flourish, for justice to prevail, for freedom to take root. We want to help you to develop that voice. And how do we do that uh, uh, at UD, sir? One of the primary ways we do that is by exposing you to different ideas, to different theories, to different histories, to different practices. But I think sometimes when you come to university, the message, and, and, and it's partly our fault, we, we communicate a message that your voice is not important. No, your voice is important, but we want to help shape it, inform it, make it a, a, a more um, a nuanced voice. Huh? So we expose you to these ideas, these theories, these histories, these practices, and I would argue not to replace your voice, not for you to now start speaking a particular theorist or a particular idea as your own, but to amplify and strengthen and critically engage your voice. Huh? Uh, that's our goal as educators, uh, particularly in the College of Human Sciences. So when you write in an essay or an assignment, you need to show when you're using someone else's voice, their idea, their theory, their perspective. Huh? One, to acknowledge the work and the effort they've put into developing their own voice. And two, so that we as lecturers know what is your voice. And what is somebody else's voice? Especially in an age of Google and AI, where you can get any theory very quickly generated with a few uh, taps of a keyboard. I'm not that interested in your reproducing theories, huh? because we can do it quite easily these days. What I'm interested in is your voice. What do you think about that theory? What do you think it means for the world we live in? What do you think it means for the people that you love and care for? What does it mean for your community, the place you care about and the struggles you face? Um, and so referencing, I want to say, it's just a way of saying, hey, I'm, I'm pointing out this thing that I've quoted here is not me. It's not my voice. It's somebody else's voice. And I'm saying this is what we call referencing. Referencing is simply acknowledging when you're using somebody else's voice uh, in, in a piece of work that you're producing. <clears throat> and we do it in two ways. We do it in the text. So while I'm reading your essay, you quote uh, somebody and you say, this person, Ali Mazuri, says this about uh, African history. And you, you show me in the text, and I'll give you an example now. This is what... Um, he said, and then we do it as a bibliography at the end of the essay. At the end of the essay, a bibliography is a list of all the sources, all the voices that you've interacted with in your essay. So let me wrap up with this example. So um, you write in an essay something about human rights, and you decide to quote Slater her voice, her ideas. And so you say, Slater says that human rights are complex and multifaceted. This is an in-text reference. Huh? So in your essay, uh, in the body that you're writing, you quote Slater, and then you say Slater, the year that she wrote it, 2016, and the page that she wrote it on. So that in theory, we can go, if we want to read more of Slater's thoughts, or the context she said this, we can go back and find that uh, in the source. And then I said the second part of referencing is the bibliography at the end of your essay. <clears throat> and here's the formula we use. Again, you don't have to know this off by heart now. We will 
uh, we provide you with documentation on our module websites and in the tutorial letter there's often this formula <clears throat> So at the end of it, you say, yes, I quoted Slater, I quoted Missouri, I quoted uh, these people. And now I'm going to tell you the full um, bibliographical details of uh, that source, who the author was, their initials, J, the year of publication, 2016, the title of the book or the article, Human Rights, Values and Social Transformation, the place of publication, Pretoria, and you need to suppress. So again, if I want to go and read more of what Slater says, you've given me um, the, the details, the minimum details I need to go and track that source down, okay? So just to introduce this idea of referencing as a way of acknowledging other voices, not so that they crush your voice, but so that you recognize the work that they've done, and more importantly, you develop your own voice in relation to those voices. So thank you so much um, uh, for, for putting up with me and I wish you all the well, uh, all the best uh, in this uh, exciting season of your, your educational journeys. Thanks, Susaka. Uh, thank you very much, Ketis. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. Uh, it was well received. I saw students reacting. Uh, please bring it on. Keep reacting, keep reacting. Um, I hope you've noted what Ketis said. It's really important and it will help you to stay out of trouble. So please make sure that you become this good person. Make sure you do your work on time and you reference and you show that you've borrowed the ideas from elsewhere. I see a lot of students have their hands up. We are not going to unmute your mics, so please go to the Q&A, um, ask your questions there and we will be able to respond to you there. We don't have enough time, so we won't be able to take hands. Go type under Q&A, my colleagues will respond to you there and they are quick in responding. Uh, Professor Mbetsi, I see you have your slide up, but we have tutorials just before you come in. Can we give uh, Ms. Mukwevo um, uh, the platform and then you present just after Ms. Mukwevo. Um, Anastasia is going to be taking us through tutorials um, and please ask questions on the chat as well about tutorials and colleagues will respond to you. Over to you, Anastasia. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, you can put it on slideshow. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, perfect. OK. OK, good morning, uh, colleagues and our dear students. My name is Anastasia Mukwebo Ramapuko. I am the academic support coordinator in the College of Human Sciences. I'm working within the tuition and student support um, office. Uh, my presentation today will be on tutorials. I will cover the following aspects. Um, I will give a brief uh, background on tutorials, uh, the three forms of uh, tutorials uh, support in CHS. I will also talk about the rules of the lecturers on the module site and uh, how, to uh, how to locate an e-tutor site. I will also give you the contact details of other academic support coordinators that are working in, in different um, schools in uh, CHS. Um, just to give a brief, a brief uh, background on tutorial support, uh, the growing concern in higher education on low retention and throughput led to a need in active student engagement and support at UNISA. And now UNISA is obliged to provide support to students in terms of tutorials. The College of Human Sciences offers face-to-face -face tutorials, um, e-tutoring and teaching assistance. Uh, the offering of e-tutorials started in 2013. Uh, we offer e-tutorials on uh, NQF level five and six that is your first year and your second year uh, um, yes, modules only. And then for face-to-face -face tutorials, uh, we offer them on selected uh, NQF level five to seven modules. Now let's look at the three types of, of, uh, of forms of tutorial support at UNISA. Uh, I will start with the face-to-face -face tutorials on the first row. The face-to-face -face tutorials are allocated to students 
based on at risk module list. So these are not offered to all modules. It's only for, for at risk module. By at risk, we mean that uh, 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 it's only offered for modules with low pass rate. They are offered uh, for selected NQF level five to seven. That is your third year module, first year to third year modules. So for 2024 at, the, uh, uh, at CHS, we have only four offerings for face to face. Uh, we'll be offering the following modules, AFK 1501, INS 1502, COM 2602, and DVA 2601. So these are the only modules that you can enroll for as face-to-face -face tutorials at the College of Human Sciences for 2024. The tutorials, uh, the tutorials take place at the regional centers. The students need to complete the face-to-face -face enrollment forms online. Uh, the schedule and timetable for these classes are uploaded at the regional web pages. And there is, uh, there is, uh, there is an address, uh, um, the web address for UNISA. You have to uh, log in, uh, you have to go to the internet and then you put in the UNISA uh, um, uh, uh, web address and then you click on My UNISA and then it will uh, take you to the My UNISA landing page. And then you click on the tutorial support and then you go to tutorial schedules. That's where you will get access to more information on face to face tutorials, the schedules, and also the enrollment forms uh, and also the at risk list. You will get it there. Uh, you have to uh, take it down from the uh, province to uh, to the regional center near you. So, for example, if you are in Gauteng province and you are staying next to Sunnyside campus, uh, um, then you have to click on Gauteng and then you go to Sunnyside and then you check there uh, their offerings for 2024 and also how to enroll and also the timetable on how to uh, and also instructions on how to attend and uh, the classes or, uh, online is either online or at the regions. So they will give you more information when if you're not sure you can also just walk into the region and inquire more on these classes they will assist you the face-to-face -face tutors are allocated 15 hours per semester module and 30 hours per year modules they work for a minimum of one hour per week so this one uh, takes you back again to the issue of timetable you need to know because this might differ the times differ and the modules uh, um, also differ per, per uh, region so you need to contact them so that you can get um, the timetable for these classes and more instruction on on how to enroll uh, the second form of tutorial is e-tutoring this is online um, classes uh, for e the e-tutoring, uh, um, the activation of the e-tutoring uh, classes uh, is only done on modules with a minimum of 400 students. So uh, the, for the modules to qualify to have an e-tutor, it must have a minimum of 400 students. So if you have registered for a module and uh, the module doesn't have a lot of students, then it means that uh, the tutorials will take part only on the lecturer site. So you will not get an e-tutor site. You will depend on the lecturers and also on the online classes that the lecturers will be conducting throughout uh, the semester. Uh, the e-tutoring the e uh, e is available in all NQF level 5 and 6 modules. So these ones, it's, we, 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 uh, it's, uh, unlike face-to-face, -face, it is not available in selected. It, it, it is offered in all modules on NQF level 5, which is your first year, and NQF level 6, which is your second year modules. Tutorials takes place on my UNISA on the module platform. The grouping is automated, so the, the, you don't have to enroll. As long as the module qualifies to have an e-tutor, we do it automatically. We link uh, um, uh, tutors on the system and you will get a group automatically. Uh, and for you to know that you have been allocated a group, uh, uh, um, you will get an uh, a SMS notification from ICT. Once your group is active, you'll also get an email on your my on your my life email address, uh, um, in, informing you that your group site is now active. The eTutor is ready. You can just log in on on Moodle and start interacting with tutors. Uh, for semester one, 2024, the tutorials will start from the 1st of March. So we're going to be allocating groups from the uh, first week of March. Uh, then the tutorials will um, take place from March and, and they will end uh, on the 31st of May for first semester. For second semester, they will normally uh, allocate groups in July, but that will depend on the registration date. So any time from July for those who have already registered for modules in the semester two, the tutorials will start around mid July or maybe first week of August, and they will end on the 31st of October. And for year modules, the, uh, the online tutorials will start from the 1st of March and end 
um, uh, on the 31st of, of October. So there are no breaks. You'll see there that they, they are not two days. We don't have more dates for here because there's no break. You start in March and you end in October, whereas uh, for, for semester classes, there, there is a break in June there uh, just to allow registration to take place. And then the semester two will begin from July. They work, uh, the e tutors work for a minimum of six hours per week. Uh, that is three days per week, two hours per day. So we normally encourage our e tutors to work on Monday, Wednesday, and also Friday. Some prefer to work on Saturday. But e tutors are not allowed to be away from students for more than 48 hours. So they, they work three hours uh, per day. They jump only one day to accommodate the 48 hours um, policy. And lastly, I will talk about um, the last form of tutorial, which is called teaching assistant. The teaching assistant is available only in signature modules. At CHS, we only have one signature module uh, in African Languages Department, which is um, AFL 1501. So for this, you will not get e-tutors, you will not get the face-to-face -face tutors, you will only have uh, the TAs who will be teaching you throughout this semester. It's only offered on NQF, so this module is only on NQF level uh, 5 module. We don't have uh, signature modules on other levels. Uh, the tutorials take place also online, just like with e-tutoring. It will take place on MyUNISA, uh, on Moodle, um, and, and there's an a example of how the the the, the the teaching assistant uh, site will look like after registration. If you can see the difference between um, the e tutor site and the TA site, it's only the E. You see that one where I said example, e tutor site example, where it says INS 1502 uh, 24. That is a short code. INS 1502 is the code uh, of the modules that you, 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 you have enrolled for. For example, if you have enrolled for English, it's going to be ENG. If it's information science module, it's going to be INS. If it's archives, it's going to be ARM. Um, and then the only uh, difference between an e tutor site and a teaching assistant is that the e tutor uh, um, uh, site name ends with an E and uh, the TA uh, site name ends with a T or a TA. Um, the module uh, arrangement is done by the by the TA and the primary lecturer. And lastly, the the, the teaching assistants uh, work plus or minus 20 hours per week. So that will also depend on the module arrangement. Um, OK. Uh, now we'll talk about the lecturer's role, the lecturer's role on the module side. The lecturer's main role is to oversee and provide support regarding all academic related matters. The lecturers are responsible for keeping the module site uh, 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 current by uploading the recent study material uh, on the main site. Uh, they also provide content specific guidance to tutors. So all the tutors that uh, will be teaching you, they will be using the tutor plans that have been approved uh, um, by the lecturers. So everything that they post there is what the lecturers have instructed them to post. So you can trust whatever that the tutors are doing on the tutor sites because they work, work in, uh, they, they work hand in hand with the lecturers. So everything from the schedule, it goes through, it, it passes through the lecturer's office. The lecturers also prepare weekly online lessons. So there will be lessons on the main sites that will be posted uh, throughout the semester by the lecturers. Um, uh, some they will be posting once a week or twice a week, depending on the uh, pass rate of the module. So just be on the lookout for that. When you log in on the lecturer's site, just check announcement uh, so that you can uh, take uh, take part uh, of this uh, and take advantage of these lessons. Lecturers are also responsible for uh, marking assignments and exam papers. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the tools that you can find on the lecturer's site and also on the on the e site. So when you log in, you will see. Uh, my, I'm glad my colleague uh, Mr. Love also gave you guys a a a, a, a bit of uh, um, you know a, 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 a information on the lecturer's site. So you were able to see when he was making an example of uh, HRV site lecturer site. So the lecturer sites are going. They they look um, the same. The only difference is the um, uh, modules. 
that you've registered for because the codes are not the same. So you have to be uh, on the lookout for that. Uh, you have to uh, the, the also uh, you, you also have to check the all the tools on the lecturer site and uh, um, also download the study material and post your announcement, your, your, your assignments on the lecturer site. So these tools will also be there on the E Twitter site. The only difference is that you cannot download the study material from the E Twitter sites. You cannot do your assignments from the E Twitter sites, but the, uh, the, you can still take place in the announcements, in the discussions, in the uh, lessons, and tutors will also be posting their uh, other materials on the additional uh, resources. They also do quizzes. So all these other tools are the same. The only difference is that you cannot download study material and also you cannot upload your assignments on the Twitter sites. Anastasia? Now, uh you have less than a minute we are way over time okay thank you okay thank you okay uh so now you can just uh, um, um have a look i had this slide so that you can look on uh, you can have a look in, uh, at how uh, um, the my unisa site looks like um firstly you need to claim your login details um i'm sure some of you have already done that that is good uh, make sure that you are able to log in on the uh, my my module um, the site so that you can have access to all these tutorials and also remember to claim your my life email address because that's important that is very much important you can study to unisa without having the my life uh, uh, email account so you need to have your to claim your my unisa login then from there test and see if you've got access to all these sites that i'm talking about remember the e-tutor sites are only going to be available from march but you can claim your logins now uh, and make sure that you've got access to the lecturer site and also the my life email address and after logging in this is how the sites uh the, the sites are going to look like uh once we um, give you or we allocate you the tutor the tutor sites when you log in that this is how you will be able to see your sites and lastly these are the contact details of all the academic support coordinators in the college of human sciences please contact us should you need more support or guidance or uh, in terms of tutorials we are here to support you guys so send us emails even if you're not sure on the navigation and the my unisa navigation please Please call us, we'll train you, we'll teach you how to uh, um, interact and how to make use of all the Moodle um, tools. Thank you so much. And lastly, happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Thank you. Over to you, Che. Thank you very much, Anastasia. Hey, the hearts are coming. Valentine, hearts are pumping. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the beautiful presentation, Anna. Uh, students know now that they have access to um, tutors at Tunisia. So I am really hoping that they will engage with you and, and your colleagues um, when they need support in, in terms of tutoring. So we are really out of time, but we have Professor Mbezi, who is the chair of department from social work and he's going to take you through graduate attribute. Please listen carefully and start making notes. Over to you, Professor Mbezi. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, and good morning to our students and uh, to our colleagues. I just want to switch on my camera for now. Please confirm, Chair, if you're able to see me. Yes, we can see you, Prof. Yes, I've just switched it on now, but uh, in the interest of connectivity, I'm going to switch it on while I am presenting. Um, I hope all is well. Um, you did not indicate as to how many minutes have you allocated to me. Ten uh, minutes, but I can Prof. Just 10 minutes that's yes. fine i'll try to be as brief as possible now the the task that i've been given is to talk about graduate attributes now we have learned about different forms of tutorial support we have learned about assessments and many more now it's time that we learn about you know the gratitude uh, so sort of the graduate attributes now, if you look at it as, uh, sorry, I just want to make sure that, uh, right. Now, there is a phrase by the Chinese philosopher by the name of Leon Zhu, who says that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Now, I have seen so many people with so many goals, but they end up not achieving their goals primarily because of their attributes 
and attitudes. And this also applies to us this morning to say we might be having a goal to become these graduates, but along the way, because of the obstacles, we end up not achieving that. We are going to focus on that. But maybe before that, it's, 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 let me begin by trying to indicate that UNISA, I think uh, colleagues might have explained this to you, that UNISA, of course, is an open distance e-learning institution. What does it mean? It means that you are not physically attending classes in a typical classroom setup, you know, like in a residential university or, um, or at school that you've attended. Now, the approach to learning is different altogether. And therefore, this is where I'm coming in to say, the attribute of UNISA student who wants to become a graduate from UNISA are specifically based on the UNISA setting. Now, ODEL is a different way of learning. Therefore, there is no, um, there is a physical distance between yourself and the university. And for most of us, this means that um, our previous learning experiences will not have um, prepared us for UNISA, uh, you know, study journey. So it's it's very important that we take note of that. I've indicated as well to say that the attribute is very key. Given the time that I'm allocated, I'll try to be as uh, quickly as possible. Now, the attribute is, is very, very, very important. Now, what do we mean when we talk about an attribute? Attribute can be described as a quality or a future regarded as a, a characteristic or inherent part for someone. So this means that you need these characteristics and you need this quality in order for you to achieve your goal. Now, these are the required graduate attributes. Now, we, we're talking about now students' personality. Many times as academics, we deal with um, a lot of personalities from students. So this speaks to a student who has actually told herself or himself that he is coming to the university to study because he or she wants to achieve something. Now, what is key is that you cannot achieve what you want to achieve if, number one, if you are not disciplined. Now, discipline in all angles. You need to be disciplined, know your goal, know your purpose. Many times what we see, we see, of course, with the young ones who are actually coming to the university, you know, who are easily influenced by their peers. Now, if you are disciplined, you are not going to be easily influenced by any other person. Remember, when you come to the university, you come as an individual, as somebody who has got her own or his own goal, like I've said. Now, you need to know, in order for you to be disciplined, you need to set time aside for your studies. Now, sometimes it becomes challenging because there is no, like I said, it's an open distance e-learning. There's nobody who is, um, you know, in a classroom, physical classroom with you, who is actually encouraging you, you to study. So, so it, it comes back to you to introspect and reflect as to what was your initial purpose to register for a particular qualification. You want to achieve that. So, so you need to set time aside for your studies. Now you need to be time conscious. You need to keep to submissions and other due, uh, due dates. This is a sign of a, a, a graduate um, or a student who, as, who is aspiring to achieve more. Just note your, your, your due dates, put them aside. Know that this is the due date for this submission and make sure that you submit on time. You won't have problems with academics who then say, now you did not submit your first assignment or you did not submit your second assignment, then it stresses you. But then, of course, as students, we've got so many challenges, you know, some we do have personal problems because we are from different backgrounds. Now, it speaks to us being so resilient, you know, against all odds. You need to be resilient 
and tell yourself that there is nothing which is going to stop me from achieving what I Dina, please mute your mic. Dina, thank you. Yes. You, you just tell yourself that, you know, I'm going to strive against all odds. Nothing is going to stand my way because there is a goal for me to achieve. This is what I have told myself. But what is very important um, that I want to share with you as students, and, and of course, as academics, we experience this many times. You need at first to have respect for fellow students, respect for yourself more, but respect for your lecturers and your NISA structures. If you do not have respect, I'm telling you, it's going to be very, very difficult for you if you see yourself as this person who knows it all, whom nobody can tell. You know, I've, 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 I've noted that as students because all of us have been students. We've got challenges. Sometimes studying is so frustrating. We get so frustrated. And, 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 and of course, as, as an institution, we train our students to be assertive. What do I mean by that? It means that there has to be a way of you know communicating with your fellow students the way of communicating with your lecturers and different other UNISA structures with of course respect you don't just communicate anyhow make sure that you communicate with respect and you follow the university's rules and, and of course as students you do have the rights that you you need of course if you do not understand something you need to reach out and university um the university will actually provide the kind of support that you need now you need to have a hunger to to develop yourself and to grow academically that's very 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 important you need to know that you know you you, you, you have to be uh, having that passion to say I want to develop myself. I want to become somebody tomorrow. I'm not just going to attain this degree. I am going to become myself and to grow academically as well. So, um, you know, the issue of disciplinary codes is very, very important for you as a student. It's very, very key. You need to be creative as well. You need to be innovative. You need to be curious, of course, uh, by means of gaining new perspectives on, on your subjects. And social emotional intelligence is very, very important in balancing life and studies. And I think I touched on this. You need to have a bit of balance. You cannot be, you know, going out or, um, you know, um, on weekends to groove and all that and you neglect your responsibility. And over the day, you expect yourself to achieve. That won't happen. So it comes with you working very hard. But of course, That's perseverance. Uh, I'm is sorry. Time I'm sorry to cut you. Uh, it's because we have students in the regions and they're waiting to attend um, another session. It's another college. So I'm That's sorry. Fine. I really apologize. I see there's a few no, points okay. that you still had to cover, uh, but we, we have to let the students go so that um, others get to have the platform as well. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Betsy, for that. I hope everyone is happy with that and that you are motivated and pumped up and ready uh, to take over your studies. Thank you, Prof. Prof. Betsy, I'm going to hand over to Dinah. Dinah, you have le less than a minute just to say thank you to our presenters and our students and everyone that has joined. Thank you. Thank you from me. Your mic. Uh, thank you, Zuzeka. As indicated, I only have a minute. Uh, to our program director, thank you for your leadership and for your governance throughout the program. Uh, to the technical team, thank you for your support and also for responding to students' queries in the background. Uh, to the management of CHS, we thank you for the support. I've seen some of you in the ch uh, on the ch on the. Um, meeting a link that you are present. We thank you for the support and uh, to our guest, which is the students. Uh, as indicated, uh, one step uh, for a mile, not two miles for a step. So if we can take this as our first step of many of the steps, um, um, Mr. Love did indicate uh, the College of Human Sciences is a family and the College of Human Sciences wishes to welcome you to the College of Human Sciences and we wish you nothing by 
get the best of 2024 and more years at UNISA to achieve uh, your qualifications. Thank you so much for joining us and for participating in the session. Have yourselves a beautiful Valentine's Day. We wish you nothing but the best as the College of Human Sciences. Thank you and take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.